Welcome back to Cake and Crochet. Today I'm going to show you how I make the fingers and thumb for the men's thermal fingerless gloves. So um, this is one of the first patterns I ever designed and it has been by far my most popular design, but I decided to redo the pattern this year. I wanted to make multiple sizes because the original was only written in one size and I also wanted to change how I did the fingers a little bit just to make it easier and to give them a little bit more room because the fingers on the original tended to be a little bit tight. So this is the left glove. It's already finished. Um, and the finger technique is going to be um, the same basic technique, it's just going to have different stitch counts. So I'm just going to show you how to do the thumb on the left, sorry, the right glove. So this one's the left glove, you can see the seat seam on the palm side. So if you're looking at the seam, your left glove should have a seam, should have the thumb on the left side of the seam. And your right glove will have the thumb on the right side of the seam because the seam will be on your palm. So this is my right glove and I've already started the thumb row. Um, the yarn that I'm using is Spud and Chloe sweater yarn. You can use any worsted weight yarn that you'd like and a size H crochet hook. So I've already done two thermal stitches so I'm going to do three more. So I need five thermal for this row. So three, four, I have a separate video on the thermal stitch if you need to brush up on that. So this is where our thumb is going to be, so we're going to skip this. I'm going to chain two and skip ten stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I will keep going over here. And now thermal here. And depending on what size you're doing, you might have more or fewer chains. So pay attention to your pattern for the specific stitch counts. This one is a size small glove. Yours might be a little bit different. And now I'm just going to thermal the rest of the way around 23 stitches. So it's one, two, three. And so I'll just keep going around. I'm not going to video that whole round. So you can see here this made this thumb hole. If I put my hand in here, I've got a thumb. Okay. So, so I'm going to finish this round. The next round, I will be back. All right, so on this next row, I've just been doing thermal crochet around. And now we're approaching our join here. I made that stitch a little loose, but that's okay. So I've got two more thermal stitches. And now across this chain, I'm going to do a single crochet in each of those two chain stitches. You could just work over the chain bar if you prefer. So there's two single crochet in those stitches. And now I'm going to keep doing thermal crochet for the last five stitches of my round. Again, your stitch counts will be different if you're doing different sizes. So it's one, two, Three, four, five, I'll join and turn. So coming back again, we're setting up our thermal stitches across that join. So these are just normal thermal here. One, two, three, four, and now here is where I did those single crochets across the thumb join so I'm just going to do front loop only single crochet in each of those two so we'll be ready for thermal stitches there on the return round so we've got that extra loop now ready for the next row all right and then we'll just continue doing thermal stitches around for the rest of this row So now you can see we have our thumb hole established. And we will come back and add some rounds to the thumb after we finish the rest of the hand. So now at this point, you're going to thermal around here and then we're going to do four more rows of just thermal stitches. Okay, so now we're ready to do the pinky. So we're looking at the wrong, the right side now instead of the wrong side. We'll do four thermal stitches. Again, check your stitch count if you're doing different sizes. So that was one. 
two, three, four, chain two. Now I'm going to skip seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I will thermal here. And then I'll keep thermaling all the way around. There should be 19 stitches if you're doing the same size as me. And you'll notice here, there is this extra ridge left, but don't worry about that. We'll pick that up when we come finish the pinky hole later. So again, we've now established a second hole. We've got a pinky. So we'll finish this round, and then on the next round, we will make the other two fingers. Okay, so I finished the round for the pinkies, and now I am going to... I said finish the last two fingers. Um, it's the last two separations for the last three fingers, but I think you get what I mean. Okay, so for this last round, I'm going to thermal two. One, two. I'm going to chain two. If you're doing the variation to make your fingers a little roomier, then you want to chain three there, or really you could chain more than that, but um, I would just chain two or three. Okay. And now I'm going to skip nine stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And here I'll thermal over here. And now I'll do three more thermals, so four total thermal stitches here. Now I will chain two again. I'm going to skip nine stitches again. So, get it lined up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There should be one left. Yep. Again, depending on your stitch count, you might have more than one left. Just make sure that you're following your specific stitch count instructions. This is for size small. Okay, so now you can see here, it's looking a little bit wonky, right? Because I basically just crocheted around where the middle finger is going to be and left the index finger and the ring finger blank. So now I'm going to finish my ring finger with this yarn that's still attached because I can just easily work around this. So now I'm going to chain one and turn, just like for thermal. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to thermal around this finger I'm going to work single crochets in each of the chain stitches on both sides of the finger, but when I do my thermal, this is the last row I'm going to do of thermal stitch, so instead of just going through the front loop here, I'm going to go through both. So I'll go through, I'll pick up the loop on the other round, and then go through both loops of the single crochet. So I'm basically just doing a single crochet, but picking up that extra thermal loop. Now a single crochet oops, in each of these chain stitches. And now I've got four thermal stitches here. Again, I'm going to pick up the loop below and both loops of my single crochet of my thermal stitch. So one, two, three, and four. And that makes it have a nice uniform look here. We don't want a random row of crochet sticking out. And then we're going to keep going here with single crochets in the chains. Again, you could just crochet over the bar instead of actually working into the chain if you want to, or if it's just too hard to get in there. I prefer to work into it because of the way I'm going to do the next fingers, and I'll show you that. All right, and then our last two thermal stitches here. And now you can choose whether you want to join and turn. I'm just going to continue working continuously around um, in single crochet here. So I'm just going to keep going around this finger until it's whatever length I want. I think I did three rounds on the other one, so I'm just going to try and make this one match. And 
I feel like if you do it without turning, it actually looks more like the thermal stitch. You can continue doing thermal stitch. It will be thicker and therefore warmer, but it will also be bulkier. And because I just feel like it feels a little odd to have really bulky fingers, I choose not to do that. Let's see if that's... I think I need one more round to match what I did before. So I'll do one more round here. You can make this as long as you want. And then I'll do a slip stitch just for my last stitch to make it blend a little better. If you have a friend who's really into rude hand gestures, maybe you want to leave it just like this. But I think we probably want to finish off the rest of the fingers. So we are going to cut that yarn. And now, right now it looks really wonky. But we need to finish the rest of the fingers. So we are going to rejoin our, our yarn. And it doesn't matter what order you do these fingers in. I like to join on the back side just so it looks nicer. Now you have an option on, so on the pinky, you definitely need to pick up this extra loop. But on these other fingers, you can choose whether you want to pick up that extra loop on the inside. I think it feels nicer if you do pick it up. It kind of leaves a ridge if you don't. But it's really up to you because it's not going to show on the outside. So if it doesn't bother you the way it feels, then you don't need to do what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pick up that thermal loop and this and then grab my new yarn. Pull it up. That counts as my single crochet or my thermal for this stitch. You can do whatever joining technique you like. And then I'm going to keep going around here. Just doing a thermal crochet, except picking up both of the top stitches here. And it's a little hard to see because my fingers getting in the way. Whether or not you pick up that mid that extra loop on the row below is up to you, but you have to go through both loops on the top or it's going to look wonky. All right, when you get to the join, you are going to work. All right, and this feels a little bit weird. You are going to slip stitch in those chain stitches because we want it to end up being the same, like even height. And so this is what we would have done if we had separated this finger first. So we're gonna slip stitch in each of those chain spaces just so that we're at the right height and then we'll keep going around with our thermal stitches. And one more thermal. Depending on what size, you may have more or less stitches there. We'll join to our starting stitch. And so that is our last round of thermal stitches and now we can just single crochet around. Make sure that you are working on the right side when you single crochet around so that it looks the same as the thermal. So I'm going to chain one and turn so that I'm working on the right side. How did I miss those loops? Shoot, gotta go back. That's what happens if you don't go through both loops on the top of your single crochet. So make sure you do, because otherwise it will not look good. All right, then we'll join to our starting stitch. Chain one and turn, okay. So we wanna be working our single crochets along the right side, and then we can work continuously around in regular single crochet. When I get to the slip stitches over the join, I'm gonna work single crochets there. So I'm literally just gonna single crochet around here. 
little tight here. You can only get through one loop of that slip stitch if you slip stitch really tight. It's okay. And then I will just, for the index finger, I like to make it the same length as the ring finger. So I'm going to just keep going until it reaches the same length. I forgot to mention that if possible, it's nice to have whoever is going to own the gloves try them on before you finish the fingers, just in case they're a little tight, you can add an extra chain stitch on the separation between the, the fingers. Alright, so that's about the same size, so I'll do a slip stitch here to finish this off and cut my yarn. It is kind of annoying because you're going to have a bunch of ends to weave in, but we're getting there. Two fingers down. Two to go. Okay, so the ring finger is a little bit different because you've got one side where it's already been done and one side where it's a chain, so we are going to treat those a little bit differently. I'm drawing my yarn in here, up through the thermal stitch and both loops of the single crochet. Get my new yarn. And finish that, and that'll be my first, that'll count as my first single crochet. And I'm going to work here and do my other thermal stitches. Again, working through both loops on the top so I'm not left with extra loops hanging around. Okay, now this side has already been done. When I come to these stitches, I'm going to slip stitch in the chain. So you can kind of grab the other loop of that chain that hasn't been worked into and slip stitch into it. I'm trying to remember to leave my slip stitches a little bit looser so they're easier to work into. If you end up going through around the whole chain, that's okay, you can do that. So if it's just too hard to get into that slip stitch, that's fine. Okay, and we'll come back around here and keep going thermal stitches around until I get to the other join. The fingers, I'll be honest, are kind of a pain. They're not my favorite to make, but it is nice to have completed fingers instead of just one big opening. So here we are, one more thermal stitch. And now since this side just has the chain, we're going to single crochet around that chain. And again, this is just to make it so that everything... My dryer just buzzed, I'm sorry. So that everything is the same height for this finger. And now I can join to my starting stitch because I started right there. So on the side where there's already another finger done, you're going to slip stitch in the base chain, the chain at the bottom of that finger, and for the side where there's already a chain, but the finger hasn't been done, you can single crochet. Okay, now I'm going to turn, and again I can just single crochet around until whatever height I want. I will often make the ring fingers just a little bit shorter than the index finger, because, you know, ring fingers are often shorter than index fingers, usually shorter than index fingers. So it just feels more natural. So again, I'm going to single crochet in that slip stitch I made. And I'll just keep going around. Eh, maybe I'll do one more round. It's really up to you how long you want to make these fingers. You could make them hand height fingers if you really want to. It's totally up to you. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to slip stitch here and cut that one off. Three down, two to go. Okay, so it's looking pretty good here. And now we're going to do the pinky. 
and then we'll do the thumb. If I can find the right yarn in. There we go. Okay, so for the pinky, you have to remember that um, we're going to start on the right side because we have all these extra loops to pick up. So I like to actually start right here just because then I know I got the very first thermal stitch and I'm not missing it. So I'm going to enter here and then again through both loops of the top there. Now I'm going to thermal around. Working through both loops of the top. You can play with it if you want to experiment about whether to use both of those loops. Because if you left one, it would be on the inside and it wouldn't show, but it would be a little bit less comfortable. So. Again, here, since there was already a chain here, we are going to slip stitch in that chain twice. One. And that just makes us at the right height. <clears throat> and now we can continue going around with single crochets worked in the round. Again, I will make the pinky usually a little bit shorter than the other fingers, just to look more natural. So here where I did the slip stitches, I'm just going to do single crochets. Alright, I think that's pretty good, so I'm going to tie that off here. Oops, oops, oops. Do a slip stitch, and then cut my own. All right, so now you can see we have four fingers, and the fingers are still a little bit tight. So if you wanted looser fingers, you could do an extra chain stitch in between each finger, and that will give every finger a little bit more room. But you can see that the way we did that join, let me take this back off my hand and show you. The way we did this join, it doesn't leave any gapping in the finger join because of those um, chains and the slip stitches around them. So it's a really nice way to join because a lot of times you'll end up with gaps at the fingers and that's just not warm <laughs> or cool or comfortable. Okay, so last one. Again, this is basically the th same thing that we've been doing, but I will show it again. So we're going to join again. We're going to join on the wrong side again because our extra loop is here. So I'll pick up that loop and my thermal stitches, the top of my thermal stitches, and join my yarn here. And then I'll keep working around. It might be easier to do this if I turn the glove inside out, but I have never actually tried that and I don't really want to right now. So I'm not gonna. Alright, and just like for the other fingers, when we get to this join, since there's already another stitch that has been worked, we're gonna do our slip stitches in our chains. So one, there were two chains, so we should have two slip stitches. If you can't see with the individual chains, just make two slip stitches in something, okay? So that you have the right number of stitches. Okay, and then we'll keep going around. Now we're back to our start. You can tell because there's no more extra loop down here. We've used up all of our extra thermal loops, so we know we're back to the beginning. So I can join here, 
and I'm gonna single crochet around, but I wanna do it along the right side, so I'm gonna turn my work. And now I'm just gonna single crochet around. So here, where I did those slip stitches, I'm gonna do single crochets around by the finger join, or the separation, the thumb separation, rather. And then keep going around here. And then I will just work continuously in the round until the thumb is as long as I want the thumb to be. Usually, maybe three rounds. So you can make that as long as you want, but that's the the gist of it. So the fingers use regular single crochet just so they're a little bit thinner, so it's a little bit more comfortable. And you can decide so how long you want the fingers to be. All right, so that is the men's thermal fingerless glove. How to do the finger joins. I hope you enjoyed this video.